Every trade, every profession has its own insider's language, a way of using what would otherwise be normal English in a fashion that you and I would not know. In the world of landscaping, there are seven of those trades that come together. In addition to plant lingo and garden lingo and the often weird world of nursery speak, there's art, architecture, earth science, and a subset of masonry called hardscaping. Even if you're going to hire a professional for any phase of the project, it'll help if you know what they're talking about. I'm Lindsay Knapp, and this is Landscape Lingo. So we're in the world of nursery speak here, and we're actually in one of my favorite nurseries to talk about a kind of strange term. It's called tree form. This is a tree form hydrangea, means that it's a shrub, in the case of hydrangea, or a vine like wisteria that's simply been pruned into this arbitrary tree-like shape. I love them, I use them, they present their blossoms at eye level, you get to underplant them, so they're very useful in landscaping, their only problem is their tendency to revert to form. So it's kind of like pasteurized processed American cheese food. Just know before you buy what you're getting and be able to take care of them. So when I talk about reverting to form, this guy is a perfect example of what I mean. He's clearly trying to go back to being a shrub. The only thing you need to do is prune the branches that occur below the level where you actually want them. He's also a really good example of what we mean by new wood and old wood. Things that bloom in the summer, like hydrangea, tend to bloom on what we term new wood. So all this growth and all these blossoms were set this year. Anything that blooms in the spring, generally speaking, was blooming on last year's wood. So that's old wood. This is new. Simple as that. So when nurseries talk about B&B, they're not talking about some fabulous little country retreat. They're talking about trees that have been balled and burlapped. Ball as in root ball, burlap as you can see. These guys are much more mature. They are sold by caliper size, which is a measurement of the diameter of the tree trunk, usually about a foot off the ground. So some nursery terminology is a little more subtle. We talk about plants that like, love, or merely tolerate certain conditions. You can kind of gauge that based on where you're finding them in the nursery. These plants are underneath the pergola. Pretty good guess, even if you didn't read the plant tag, that they like being in shade to semi-shade. Plants across the way in full sun, same story. That's the kind of environment they're gonna want from you at home. Plant tags that say things like tolerates this condition. Think about Thanksgiving dinner with your least favorite relative. You can do it for a day. You might not be so fortunate tolerating it for an entire year. So make a careful judgment about where you put that plant. If you want something that loves the conditions that you have on your property, get a plant that says, loves this. Don't get a plant that is like your least favorite uncle. So we're here in the potted tree section of the nursery. These guys are not sold by caliper size, but by pot size. But that's not actually what I want to talk to you about. This one is a perfect example of a weird little phrase called drought tolerant once established. So we go back to the tolerant thing, but it's the once established part that is really important because establishment can take a year, even two years. And so when we see that tag that says drought tolerant, we tend to put them far away from house and hose. What that means, if you've done that, is that you will need to lug water to it by five gallon buckets for at least the first year, and as I say, maybe even two years. So just choose carefully. It will be drought tolerant somewhere in the future, but maybe not so much now. So just be careful. So I hope you found this fun helpful. Stay tuned to this channel. Follow us on social media. There's more landscape lingo to come. I'm Lindsay Knapp. I'll see you next time.